Today I'm going to take you through the process of creating a vivid 80s style neon chrome text effect. This ultra rad style uses the most intense RGB colours available to create the brightest, most fluorescent effect possible that smoothly transitions through a variety of colours. We'll use Photoshop layer styles to create the foundation of the effect, then add the vibrant colours with a combination of gradient tools. Some subtle texturing helps to add some intricate details to the chrome text surface, then the artwork is finished off with a complementary 80s inspired tiger stripe background. To create your neon chrome text effect, create a new document in Adobe Photoshop. I'm using dimensions of 4000 by 3000 pixels. Most importantly, make sure you're working in the RGB colour mode. To ensure we see the most vibrant RGB colours, go to View and Proof Setup and make sure Monitor RGB is selected, then turn on Proof Colours. Swap the default foreground and background colours around and use the Command and Backspace shortcut or Control and Backspace on Windows to fill the canvas with black. Select the Type tool and lay out your text wording in your chosen font. I'm using one of my favourite aggressive brush fonts named Hyperwave. This font includes three versions, which makes it easy to fully customise your type to eliminate any repetitive characters, giving it the appearance of a hand-lettered piece. You can pick up this font for $16 or with up to a 50% discount if you buy it along with other fonts or design resources by following the link in the description. Slight kerning adjustments between two characters can be made by placing the cursor then holding the ALT key while nudging with the left or right keyboard keys. Once you've created your type, right click on the layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. This will preserve the live type and will also allow us to apply adjustments non-destructively. This particular brush font has a few too many tiny details. First go to Filter, Noise and Median and choose a value that smooths out the text. Around 20 should do. Double click the layer to apply a few layer styles. Begin with a colour overlay to give the text a neutral grey fill. Enter 0 in the hue and saturation fields then 50 for brightness. Add an inner shadow next, set the distance value to 0 then adjust the size to around 100 pixels. Increase the opacity to around 60%. Next apply a bevel and emboss. Max out the depth slider, then adjust the size to determine how large of a chamfer you want around your text. Set both the highlights and shadows to 80% opacity. Finally add a simple outer glow using the default settings. One important step to make this effect work correctly is to apply a gradient overlay. Choose Gradient from the Adjustment Layer list and choose a basic black to white gradient. Set the angle to make the gradient flow diagonally across the canvas. Change the blending mode of the gradient layer to Overlay. We only need the gradient to be overlaid over the text, so apply a clipping mask by holding the ALT key while clicking between the layers. However when you do so, it breaks the gradient. A quick fix is to unclip the layer for a moment then make a group containing that single text layer using the Command and G shortcut. Set the clipping mask again between the group and gradient and the effect should now work as expected. Double clicking the gradient layer allows you to change the angle of the gradient. I'll show you how this affects the effect in a moment. Apply a gradient map adjustment layer, not to be confused with a regular gradient. Another way to create a clipping mask out of the adjustment layer is to click the little clip icon in the properties panel. Edit the gradient and add several new swatches. Give each one a different shade of grey, somewhere between black and white. As the gradient bar is filled, you can see it gives the text a shiny chrome appearance. The position of these gradient swatches and the fill colour can be adjusted to target specific areas. Just using shades of grey produces a typical chrome appearance. If you turn off the visibility of the regular gradient layer for a moment, you can see how it allows the effect to work correctly. Adjusting the angle of the gradient also allows you to customise the reflectiveness of the chrome. Using the same principle you can create gradient maps to produce all kinds of shiny effects. Drag the gradient map over the new layer icon to duplicate it. Turn off the visibility of the original, then edit the colours of the gradient to add some blues and pinks. Max out the brightness and saturation to create a really vibrant effect. You can place the colours in any order, but it helps to choose hues that naturally blend into each other on the colour wheel for smooth transitions. Play around with the gradient angle to refine the appearance. Create another gradient map duplicate. 
Let's create the rad radioactive retina burning colour scheme we've been waiting for. Edit the gradient swatches with super bright colours. Again, choosing an order that naturally follows the colour spectrum. The more swatches your gradient is made up of, the more reflective and chrome the text will appear. Adjust the spacing to allow some colours to take up more space than others to fine tune the appearance. Let's add some finishing touches to the effect. Download this free rainy window image from Pixabay. Open it in Photoshop and go to Select and All and Edit and Copy. Close the image, then in the main document select the topmost layer so the rainy image will be placed at the top of the stack. Then go to Edit and Paste. Convert the layer to a smart object, then go to Image Adjustments and Shoe Saturation. Reduce the saturation value to zero. Change the layer's blending mode to overlay to allow the details of the raindrops and background lights to interact with the colours of the text, giving it a subtle textured appearance. Enhance the details further with a filter, sharpen and unsharp mask. Experiment with the sliders. I used around a 300 amount and roughly 3 to 4 pixel radius with zero threshold. Reduce the opacity to tone back the texturing so it looks more natural. Around 25% should do. Scroll down the layer stack and activate the background layer. Add a solid colour adjustment layer above it. Find a deep dark blue colour. Open up the free Tiger Strike image I also managed to find from Pixabay. Copy and paste it into the main document, above the solid colour adjustment layer. Set the blending mode to overlay, then invert the image with the command and I shortcut. Each of the three gradient maps shown in this tutorial generate a completely different look. Plus there's many more you can create with alternative colour schemes. What's more, since this effect is made up of smart objects, you can easily change the wording of the text and the effect will automatically update. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learned any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.